Thank you. So before I do the introduction and explain what I'm going to do, I'm going to execute a single command uh, because it will take a bit of time until magic happens. So bear with me. I'm going to execute kubectl apply dash dash file name and then some YAML file, um, which happens to be uh, called uh, GKE YAML. I will let that run in the background. It will take a couple of minutes, just enough time for me to explain what I want to do and so on and so forth. So, uh, infrastructure, right? Infrastructure is code. Everybody's, I mean, we are living in 2021. Everybody's defining their infrastructure as code. That's not a new thing. You're picking one tool over the other. I'm not going to enter into the discussion which one is better, which one is worse. Uh, just to say that basically all the tools in the market are now taking into account that the infrastructure is defined as code simply because everything is defined as code today. But I feel that we need more than what the, let's say commonly used tools are uh, bringing to the table, right? Yes, define infrastructure as code, execute some commands, some magic happens, uh, things are created, deleted, updated, what's or not. We do that, that's been, that's a done story. now. What I think we need uh, additional, right, uh, are a couple of things. First of all, I would really like uh, to see unification of the API. I use Kube, uh, Kubernetes, everybody uses Kubernetes. Why not leverage Kubernetes API for more than creating Kubernetes resources? And we've seen that trend uh, for a while now. We've been using Kubernetes API to create virtual machines. We've been using Kubernetes API to, to, to manage uh, Mac OSs, Mac OS servers, right? And so on and so forth. So the whole idea is, hey, how about I do everything through Kube API and that everything includes my infrastructure. How about I communicate with Kubernetes, tell it what to do uh, or what I, not what to do, sorry, that's bad. Not tell it what to do, but what is my desired state and then uh, it creates, sometimes it creates pods, sometimes it creates clusters, sometimes it creates networking and so on and so forth, right? Extend Kubernetes API to everything. And in, that, in this specific case that everything includes infrastructure. Uh, and that, if you can manage that, right? If you can manage to enable uh, our need to, to, to manage infrastructure to Kubernetes API, that means that we can leverage Kubernetes ecosystem, which happens to be the biggest ecosystem known to men right now, right? So if we can manage our infrastructure through the calls to the API, we can manage uh, Kubernetes ecosystem. And that means that we can use all the good tools, all their favorite stuff, uh, doesn't matter whether that's uh, Flux or Argo CD or Helm or Customize or Prometheus, doesn't matter what it is, if we, can, if we can make infrastructure definitions Kubernetes native, then we can leverage the whole ecosystem. Uh, and finally, the, the third thing that I think is kind of embarrassingly missing from, from the current landscape, and that's automatic drift detection and reconciliation, right? Uh, same things that you're seeing in Flux uh, throughout this session. Hey, uh, there is the state, desired state defined somewhere. There is the actual state uh, of something. How about we reconciliate those two uh, states the moment there is a drift instead of waiting for somebody to push something to a Git repository, which might happen five seconds later or five days later, right? So Kubernetes API, Kubernetes ecosystem and drift detection and reconciliation. If we can get, and by the way, the third one, we had it in the past. We had it with Chef, we had it with Puppet, but we somehow lost that ability in the meantime. So one potential solution to, to do everything we do with infrastructure today, uh, you know, the typical things, plus, a, plus those additional potential requirements like Cube API ecosystem, drip detection, reconciliation could be done, uh, at least the project I know uh, is cross-plane. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is precisely that. I'm going to show you how we can leverage cross-plane to do the things uh, that I mentioned before, the things that typically uh, infrastructure as code tools do not do and potentially tied to GitOps uh, soon afterwards. So bear with me, I'm going to share my screen again and uh, let me check whether uh, first the effects of this file were correct. So what I 
what I did when I executed this uh, GKE YAML, I'm going to show you the definition. Basically, what I did is defined uh, two different Kubernetes resources, right? I defined GKE cluster. You can probably guess by the name what that something is. And that GKE cluster, you can probably guess, will create a GKE, in this case, GKE cluster. It could be any other type of cluster or uh, infrastructure resource. It will do it in certain location, US East 1. And it will create a node pool uh, in uh, US East 1B uh, with specific name, uh, some arguments, like what is the minimum and maximum no uh, number of nodes, and so on and so forth, right? This is standard stuff. This is. If you ignore that this is YAML, this would be almost the same as what you would define in HCL if you would be using Terraform or uh, it wouldn't look the same, but uh, conceptually the same, same arguments as what you would do uh, in Pulumi, simply because most of those tools are using the same API at the end of the day, and then that those definitions are reflecting that API. So. I executed that, I, I created those two Kubernetes resources and, and I did that in my Minikube cluster. So this is Minikube running on my laptop, right? It's not even a real cluster. Well, I'm not sure whether you call Minikube a real cluster, right? Now, if I go to my uh, AWS, con uh, sorry, uh, GCP console, you should see that this cluster was created and actually it wasn't created, it is still being created uh, or maybe it's finished. Let's double check whether the cluster was created. Yes, it was created. And uh, I have a cluster that is uh, in US East region one, US East one region, meaning that there are three or four, I'm not sure how many, uh, three zones, right? Uh, so it is a cluster, cl regional cluster spread in three zones. Uh, and uh, it should work, right? If I go to nodes, I can see that uh, I have my nodes created. But uh, let me double check. Yes, but there seems to be missing two nodes, right? I have, an, I have one node and see this is a regional cluster. It should have three nodes because there are three zones in that region. So let me double check what's going on, right? Now what's going on is obviously that in my YAML definition, I forgot to specify all the zones of the cluster, right? I specified only US East 1B instead of 1B and C and D. So I'm going to correct that. I'm going to save the change. And uh, my cluster should now be corrected. Now, don't start yelling immediately, Victor, you're, you're doing things through the web UI. You should do things as code. I'm doing this intentionally, and you can probably guess why. Uh, so in a second, in a, in, a, in, a, in a minute or two, my cluster should now be running in three zones instead of one because I made a mistake. So. Uh, let me just see. Uh, let me take a look at what's going on, right? And I can see what's going on by um, executing commands. And this is now the same Kubernetes way of operating like anything else, like kubectl uh, get, uh, get GK clusters. Uh, I can see that I have a cluster. It is recon reconciling. Uh, I can retrieve the nodes, node pools. Uh, here it is. It is provisioning the node pools. And uh, since I created my cluster using uh, crossplane and then modify it manually, which, which was a bad idea, but I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to retrieve the cube config and double check whether everything is working. Uh, so cube cuttle get nodes, right? Oh, wrong command, nodes. Come on, come on, come on. And you can see that there are three nodes, right? There are three nodes because I by mistake created a single zone cluster, which is one node. And then I went manually to, uh, to change my configuration through, uh, through GCP console. And you can see by the age, right? That those two nodes are uh, younger, like 10 and 17 seconds old, right? So let me see what's happening right now, right? And uh, the reason why I want to see what's happening, uh, there we go. Uh, the two nodes that were created were now uh, were being uh, removed from the node pool. And the reason why that is happening is because I broke the whole promise, the whole idea that my infrastructure should be defined as code, right? I defined my infrastructure as code, and then I went and did manual changes. And then Crossplane did something that uh, similar tools in the space do not do. And that something is that it is constantly monitoring 
this desired state, in this case, as Kubernetes resources and the actual state. Uh, and as a result, it is doing more or less the same thing what uh, Plux is doing, let's say, except that it is not monitoring uh, Git repository, it is monitoring resources in the control type of cluster where Crossplane is running. And it said, hey, uh, my cluster is not what uh, what you specified to want it, uh, you want it to be. I'm going to revert to the changes that you did manually because that's just silly. You're not supposed to do that, right? So it is continuously monitoring the two states and making sure that the desired and the actual state are converged. Now, as a good citizen, what I should really have done is instead of manually changing something uh, in a... Uh, uh, in from the web UI from the console, I should have changed the file. I should have changed the definition uh, in a in a in a file that defines that and that it is that is stored in a Git repository. Uh, so I'm going to do that right now, right? I'm going to go and actually I already did that. I'm going to show you the changes that I'm going to do to the cluster. Uh, GK region is one and YAML one other, right? So I already prepared in advance a file that has a correct number of zones. Uh, and all I need to do really is to push this. I could actually, what I could do right now is execute kubectl apply just as I did at the very beginning of this session, send, uh, say, hey, this is the new definition of the cluster and Crossplane would uh, pick up those changes, do whatever needs to be done and my cluster would be regional finally. But that's not a good idea either, right? I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing that because all the, all the GitOps principles and the talks that you're probably almost certainly have been hearing in the previous session, what we can do better. And that better means that we can define everything, all the Kubernetes resources, we can keep them in Git, right? And we can let Flux or Argo CD monitor that Git repository and do what needs to be done. So instead of us executing commands, we're pushing changes to Git so that we always know what our desired state is and we can collaborate and do all the jazz that we normally do. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to move this file, GK region to the production directory. Production directory is where I configured my Argo CD to, uh, to monitor, right? That's one of the directories in my Git repository that it is monitoring. So I'm going to add that change. I'm going to commit that change and I'm going to say, I'm too lazy to think what to write here. Uh, and I'm going to push that change to a Git repository. Now, while that is happening, and everything I'm showing you right now is, is going to be uh, based on Argo CD. The logic is exactly the same, right? No differences between Argo CD and from conceptually, at least between Argo CD and, uh, and Flux. And what is happening is that here I have my uh, Argo CD UI. It has only one application. It has production environment with only one application, which is Argo CD itself, right? So it is managing itself. Uh, and right now it is waiting. I think that I configured it by default to um, to synchronize Git repository with uh, with its all internal uh, database uh, every three minutes. So I'm going to speed up. I'm going to press sync. You should never do this. Never press sync. Uh, it, uh, the Argo CD will do the job for you, but I'm too lazy now to, I'm too impatient to wait for it. So I did it. So what it did is that it synchronized my Git repository with uh, its internal definitions, what it knows about uh, the, the desired state. And if I go back to my console, uh, it should probably uh, start doing something. And that something should be that it should create all the missing nodes. kubectl get nodes. Let's see whether it is still not doing that. It will probably take a couple of more seconds or moments until it uh, synchronizes. And from there on, once, once, once it's uh, one, the two, one, the three states, actually in this case, we had three states to be synchronized. And those three states is the desired state, which is uh, Git repository. 
And the second state would be the internal state of the tooling, in this case, Argo CD. And the third state would be the actual state. And that actual state is, the, in this case, is infrastructure. So what once the first set of synchronization happens, once the Git and in cluster, uh, where Argo CD and Crossplane are running are synchronized, and then Crossplane will take it, uh, will take that as a new desired state. It will compare it. Uh, from there on, it will continue comparing it. Actually, it will be continuously comparing the two states, and it will detect that there is something wrong. That infrastructure is not as I want it to be, and it will create the nodes. And there we are. If I go back to my my terminal, the missing nodes are there. It synchronized the two states. I combined Argo CD with uh, with uh, what is it? Crossplane, GitOps, all the way. Uh, and the only API I'm using, the only type of YAML I need to think about is Kubernetes. And that's my short pitch. I think that I'm just on time. Victor, yes, you are. <laughs> so I think you're actually, uh, I know because we, we started a few minutes late, so thanks for being so prompt. Um, it's really great to see the uh, comparison there. So 